So I just finished breakfast and the time has come for me to say goodbye to my really nice hotel here. Um, today I am cycling about 30 kilometers to a very special place. You're going to have to stay tuned to find out where I go. But um, it's going to be a very special accommodation with a very special meal tonight at a Michelin star restaurant. So um, I've, I'm all packed up. I'm ready to go. It's just time to say goodbye to my little place here. Just like that, we're back on the bike and on our way. It's another nice day here in France. The weather is pretty clear, like the sky is almost entirely blue in every direction that I look. One of the things that I haven't been showing you about this bike tour on camera is the people that I've been meeting along the way at the hotels and stuff, simply because I can't just stick a camera in a stranger's face and start recording them. But um, everyone has been really nice, actually. And as I said previously, like France has a reputation of being somewhat like rude to strangers who don't speak French or something. But all of the people at each of the hotels uh, has been really, really friendly um, and accommodating, considering I only speak a few words of French. So really, really nice. These people at this last place, I really liked. Like I would be friends with them in normal life. So I've turned off of the route, the recommended route, because I saw on my map that there's a cave over here. And I've just arrived at the cave, and there is in fact a cave here. Here it is. <laughs> I'm gonna go inside, check it out. Huh. It's pretty small. Someone's had a campfire here, obviously. You could camp in here for sure. It's definitely big enough. You can tell there used to be like a door or something on here, so they maybe were using this for storage, maybe for the farm. They're growing like uh, olives and stuff around here. So maybe this was part of like the farm. I'm not sure. 
Very cool though, little detour, little detour. So I've dropped off my bicycle and belongings now at the hotel and I'm taking a short walk up the road to the chateau and village that's located at the top of this uh, small cliff overlooking the entire region right next to my hotel. So this was easily the shortest day of cycling on the entire Provence Prestige and Velo bike tour with Belle France. But it was the shortest day of the tour because there was a lot of things to see and do along the way. And one of the biggest things that I did on this particular day was eat dinner in a Michelin star restaurant. Before I talk about the restaurant, however, I need to talk about the hotel that I was staying at. First of all, I can't say the name of this hotel. I can't say the names of any of these hotels or cities that I'm traveling through here in France. So I'm gonna pop the name of the hotel up on the screen right now so you know what I'm talking about. That hotel is the nicest hotel I think I have ever stayed at 
anywhere in the world. This is a hotel that I'm going to be telling people about for years and years to come. When I think about memorable places that I have stayed in the world, this is probably one of the top 10 easily. Um, as far as luxury goes, it, it's just, this is the place. Like, this place has everything. They have multiple swimming pools. The rooms are super nice. The hotel staff was incredible. There are tennis courts. There's goats. There's I mean, just so much. The grounds themselves were so beautiful, not even to mention the rooms that you're staying in. So, uh, yeah, the hotel is just like, boom, 11 out of 10 stars, if that's even possible. Then there's this Michelin star restaurant that's associated with the hotel. And on this particular evening of the Provence Prestige and Velo Bike Tour, you eat at this Michelin star restaurant. Now, I did not go into the restaurant with my camera. I did bring my phone and I was able to snap a few pictures while I was in there, but I did not record the dining room or the dinner or me sitting at the table or any of that because this restaurant was so fancy that I felt really weird bringing my camera in there. There were other diners who had nothing to do with me, uh, the Bicycle Touring Pro or Belle France or anything. They were just regular people who paid for dinner at this very fancy restaurant, so I didn't want to bring my camera in there. But uh, I did want to tell you about the experience because eating at this Michelin star restaurant is something I'm definitely going to remember for years to come. The first thing that, well, I was nervous about eating here, first of all, to be honest. Um, and I was nervous because, one, I was on the trip by myself. Most people who go on this bike tour go with a couple or a couple of friends or something like that. There's a bug. Um, and... I was there by myself. So right away, I just felt kind of weird eating dinner by myself. Second of all, uh, I had to wear fancy clothes, which many of you who have seen my videos know that I'm not wearing fancy clothes very often. Uh, three, I don't speak French. And four, I'm a vegetarian. So I had all of these things kind of like going against me. Um, but I went to the restaurant, I show up, I'm, I'm a party of one, they, they, were, they knew that I was coming, I had a reservation of course, and uh, they sat me down, there was like a maitre d' who was the main person that I spoke to throughout the evening, and he showed me to my table, uh, was very nice, spoke English, and uh, basically greeted me at the restaurant. Then. Over the course of the next three hours, yes, dinner took three hours to complete. Um, over the course of the next three hours, I was served a variety of dishes. There were supposed to be, I think, about seven courses on the menu, and there ended up being like 13 or something like that. It was crazy. Um, this is a restaurant, and this is a hotel that goes above and beyond your expectations. The hotel and the restaurant, I got the feeling that like if if you go in there expecting a 10 course meal, they're gonna give you a 20 course meal. If you go in there expecting five star service, they're gonna give you 10 star service. And honestly like that's how my experience was on this particular day of the tour, and this was definitely my experience eating dinner at this particular Michelin star restaurant. So they bring in the first course, which wasn't even on the menu, it was like, like a little appetizer before the menu even started. And so right there I'm getting like one course that's not on the menu, see what I mean? And so they bring it out and it's this like three-tiered plate white plates like in tiers, and then on each tier of the plates, there was like this tiny little pebble-sized piece of food. Um, and the waiter comes over, they, they put the, the three-tiered plate down in front of me, the food is there, they bring over a, a set of fork, a knife, a spoon, they put that all in front of me, and they explain what this is. You know, each one of these three little pebble-sized pieces of foods is a different thing infused with asparagus and all this kind of stuff and they explain it to me and then they walk away and I'm and I'm supposed to eat this and uh, my my first thought was they they brought over a fork and a knife and a spoon I, I can't remember if the spoon was there for the first course or not but they bring over the fork and the knife let's say 
and each one of these things is so small. I mean, it's like the size of my pinky finger, you know, that like the size of an M&M. &M. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, am I supposed to use the fork and the knife to cut this little pebble in half? Or, or am I just supposed to pick it up and put it in my mouth and eat it? In the end, I just picked it up and put it in my mouth and ate it. But um, after I did eat the three little pebbles from the uh, first course of my meal, uh, they came over, took the plate away, and they also took the fork and the knife away, which I didn't use. And then they came back a moment later with the second course, which was something that was actually on the menu. And they put down a new knife and a new fork and a new spoon and a new plate and presented the second course of the meal then. So this happened for each and every one of the courses. And like I said, I think there were about 13 courses throughout the entire meal. So I had 13 different knives and forks and spoons and plates uh, presented to me throughout the course of this three hour meal. Now, I am far from a food expert, but I was able to look at the food that was presented to me and know that there was a lot of time, effort, and energy that went into each and every one of the courses that was presented to me. And I know that not only because of how it tasted, but also because at the end of the meal, the chef came out himself and spoke to me at my table and was asking, uh, trying to get my feedback actually on the meals that he gave me, what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, and he was very curious to know as a vegetarian what I thought of his meals because uh, for him, serving a vegetarian meal was not something that he was necessarily used to, but that he had done in the past, but he didn't do frequently. So I was really the only person in the dining room that night that was eating a vegetarian meal, um, and I definitely ate differently than the other people in the dining hall. So he came out, the chef himself, and uh, he was asking, he just wanted to get my feedback at the end of the meal on what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy. Um, my favorite two dishes that I was served were a carrot dish, which was like a raw carrot stuffed inside of a cooked carrot with carrot infused sauce on top. And then there was a beet dish, which was like beets, I don't know how they were cooked exactly, but it had these little like crumbles on top. So it was like a combination of like soft beetroot mixed with like chips or something on top. It was just a really nice texture. So those were my two favorite dishes. And then, uh, like I said, the, the chef came out and talked to me for a little bit, which was very nice. And I was sure to compliment him on the uh, meal I had just eaten. And then after the, the whole three hour meal was over, I got up from my table and uh, left the dining room. And as I was about to leave the restaurant, I was presented with this little pastry that once again was like a little bonus that I did not see coming. It was a extra that the restaurant added to their already incredible service. So it was a little pastry that I took with me that they said I could eat for dessert or that I could have uh, the following morning for breakfast or whatever. And it is in fact something that I ate the following day. Uh, you'll see it in my uh, next video. I ate it uh, kind of for lunch. So anyways, overall, this was just like an incredibly memorable day of bicycle touring. It's probably one of my most memorable days of cycling and traveling that I've had in a very long time. Um, not only because the day was like incredibly luxurious, but because each and every experience that I had at the hotel in that old town at the top of the rock and in the hotel, all three of those experiences like combined in this tiny little area just made my day on the road incredibly special and incredibly memorable. And that's why I like to go bicycle touring is because not every day on the road is super memorable. A lot of days on the road, I, I kind of forget, you know, like the roads all start to look the same. But then every once in a while, a day like this happens and it sticks with you. And I know that this particular day of bicycle touring on this particular bike tour with Belle France is going to stick in my mind for a very long time. All right, so that's all I wanted to say about this particular day of bicycle touring in southeastern France. If you want to learn more about participating in this particular bike tour for yourself, be sure to visit the Belle France website at Belle France 
bicycletouringpro.com or go to my website at bicycletouringpro.com and do a quick search for Belle France. Once again, I am Darren Alf from bicycletouringpro.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you out on the road sometime soon. Bye-bye.